Hi there! Today I want to talk about treating your renderings as if they are photographs in a software like Capture One or Camera Raw, Lightroom or whatever you like to use so that you can get a more photorealistic look because every or most rendering engines work in linear space. In linear space is not the way we see the world and especially it's not the way we see the world through photos. Let's take a look at this piece here, which I did for a client a few years ago. I worked in uh, 3ds Max and rendered it in um, V-Ray. And when we look at the original rendering, which is the EXR I saved, the 32-bit. And this is the way I set up the rendering so I can get the room very bright and light. Obviously, if you would do a rendering and leave it as it is in linear space, then you probably wouldn't render it like this. You probably would tone it down and have it not as bright as it is right now. So you can see here in these spots where the light is hitting the objects. And you can see how the materials react to the light, in my opinion, in a very ugly way. Like this floor has a brown wooden texture and it gets somehow yellowish orange-ish um, in the place where where the light hits it. it. It's not very pleasing to the eye. It's just too bright anyway. And this this wall is totally burned out. This is burned out from the light coming from the left. And it lacks, it lacks contrast. So if you treat your ArcWiz um, renderings as photographs, you can get a lot of pleasing and more realistic contrasts and more realistic colors in your renderings. Let's go back to bringing our boring linear renderings to a picture that looks like it was taken by a camera. So this is the 32-bit file, saved as a 16-bit TIFF file. And we're going to try the, to bring the highlights down so that we don't have the burnout highlights here anymore. And if I bring this down to 100%, you can already see that it's getting gray. So actually, the 16-bit TIFF file is not the same as a 12-bit raw file. The raw file has much more dynamic range. So you bring it closer to an S-Log or V-Log file, which is very, very low contrast. And you have all the dynamic range and you squeeze it into the 8-bit file. Because in, in Capture One, in, in Photoshop, and in Camera Raw and in Lightroom, you cannot work with 32-bit pictures. So the most important thing here is to use highlight burn to get all the information in the burned out areas and then later in your image processing software you put back in the contrast that you want to achieve so this is the highlight burn it just takes all the details that are burned out in the highlights this is the original and as i take out the highlights i make the image more flat so here is another example. There's another furniture catalog image that I did for a large European furniture maker. This is how the actual linear image looks like, totally burned out. The reason why is that I want to fill this room with light. So as you can see, this is totally unusable. But what I actually worked from was this image. So as I said, we can't output a raw image from V-Ray or as far as I know any other rendering engines. So we have to bring this to kind of log contrast. So how to achieve this? In V-Ray, we would just go and add an exposure layer in the VFB. And bring the highlights all the way down until there is no burned out area anymore. And this is still burned out a little bit. This is still burned out. So we use we use another layer um, of highlight burn and bring it down just as much as we can without getting it too too gray. Because the gray parts they don't really help us. It's just gray. There is no more information in there. I would say around yeah 0.5, and from there I would go. And um, I always start with the clarity because I, I love that effect. And I add clarity. And you can already see the micro contrast 
really brings out the texture. And so we'll just go in and, and add contrast here with a curve. It's nice, but it's not as the same, not the same as bringing in the clarity. And I like to mix up the clarity, it's like 50 natural, add another layer, 50 punch, and maybe add another layer and add 50 neutral. And then add more contrast with the curve. Don't want any area to be totally white. You don't want this to be too dark. You still want to see something in the shadows. And one of the most important things, because we put in we put in all that contrast, we need to bring the highlights down again. And we know that we already we have that information in here. So um, it's just a matter of how we process it in Capture One and bring the highlights down. So it's not too burned out. And then we can add even more brightness and probably that's about it i mean we could use some some vignetting like the darker parts outside it's not so much liked in the furniture industry so the other way to make it brighter in the in the corners so this was pretty quick um as compared to the stuff that i that, made, that i made in the end i think at that time I raise the shadows to make the picture more appealing and not as contrasty and dark as my current version. You can finish the photo in the VFB too. In the VFB you don't have the micro contrast, you don't have the clarity and I just love that effect. But um, that's just me. If you want to kickstart your photorealistic look when it comes to contrast in your renderings, just go to my stores and download the free photographic LEDs and the V-Ray VFB presets and you can easily get a nice contrast in your pictures. So go ahead and download them and just play around with them and I'm sure that you will be fond of the results. And this concludes my video about treating your renderings as photos and I hope you got some inspiration and maybe some new ideas for new workflows. I think from a philosophical point of view it's important how you look at your renderings and don't look at your renderings as something artificial. And if you treat your renderings as photos, you take a different angle on looking at them and processing them. I think in the end you will get a much more realistic look. Okay, thanks for watching today. It was a pleasure talking to you. If you like my channel, if you like my videos, please like and subscribe, comment. I'm very eager to know what you think about my videos. If there's anything that I can help you with to achieve better renderings and higher realism, just ping me and we'll get in touch. Okay, bye bye. Talk to you soon. Tschüss.